This is KGW News at Sunrise. New restrictions start this week in Oregon and Washington as both states see record numbers of COVID cases. We're going to go over the new guidelines so you know what to expect over the next few weeks. Also this morning, a new shelter just opened in North Portland that aims to connect homeless people with treatment programs and job training. We'll tell you about the progress this new shelter has made so far. Plus. Yay. It is definitely cool, it's different. I'm sure a lot of people benefit from it. A new tourist attraction in Sandy is hoping to help every tourist see the entire color spectrum. They installed a viewfinder to help the colorblind. We're gonna show you how it works. It is a Monday morning, Rod and Nina. We've got that uh, November, December vacation schedule happening now. So Brenda's <laughs> off this week. I am back. Uh, I gotta be honest with you. It feels yes. weird to get back in the saddle after a week off. So uh, I may need about two hours to get my feet underneath me, if you don't mind. Uh oh. <laughs> Boy, this could be <laughs> a bumpy show. By 701, I'll be great, though. <laughs> this could be a bumpy show. Uh -oh. okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is mostly light rain. It is widespread across the area. It's with a warm front that's moving south to north this morning up across our region. I said warm front, so we're still very mild out there. 48 in Portland, 54 at noon. You know, there could be some cloud breaks this afternoon, but there could also be a low cloud deck that is stubborn and produces some patchy drizzle. Again, we'll be mild all day long. All right, Rod, we'll see you soon. Thank you. We start with yet another grim milestone for the United States. We have now passed 11 million COVID cases and they are spiking across the country as well as here in the Northwest. More than a dozen states you see here on the map are issuing new restrictions to help slow the spread, including Washington and Oregon. So in Washington, the majority of those restrictions take effect tonight and they will last for at least a month. So here are the big takeaways for restaurants and bars. Only outdoor dining and to go service is allowed. There'll be capacity limits for retail stores and churches. Plus choirs and bands won't be allowed to perform during services. Weddings and funerals can be held with limited attendance, but receptions won't be allowed. Gyms will have to close as well as entertainment spots like movie theaters, museums and zoos. And this is a big one for Washington. Social gatherings with people outside your home are not allowed at all unless you hmm. quarantine for 14 days prior or quarantine for seven days and you test negative for the virus. Washington Governor Jay Inslee acknowledged this won't be easy for a lot of people, but he also said the restrictions are necessary to help save lives. So what do you all think about it? Tim Gordon talked to people in Clark County. We are today in a more dangerous position than we were in March. In a rare Sunday news conference, Washington's governor said with daily COVID case counts doubling in the past two weeks, we all must help stop the surge. We make a decision whether this is pandemic is gonna swallow us whole. We make a decision whether we're gonna eventually recover our economy. We make the decision whether we're gonna show our loved ones that we really love them. A lot of the economic pain will fall on restaurants where it will be at least four weeks of no indoor dining. Carol's Corner Cafe is a popular spot in Clark County. People are very friendly, it's good food, um, plenty of it. Running at 50% capacity with safety practices in place. We feel like Carol's is really taking precautions. Um, and any place we go out to eat, we make sure that they take precautions. That ends Wednesday when the dining room shuts down. Yeah, so it's rough. It's going to be rough for everyone, and I hope everybody um, comes together and, and does the takeout portion of it all because it's really going to be the only thing that helps these little places. Martha Roy is waiting for a table with her daughter and grandson. She loves Carol's. But my stance is I'll follow his lead, and if that's what he says, if we save lives, it's worth it. You know, we we lost our neighbor, a young man this year who had four young children to COVID. Retail and grocery stores will need to limit customers to 25% capacity, down from 30%. We found shoppers thinking about this in different ways. I'm not big on government restrictions. Honestly, I think that we should be able to be responsible ourselves. We have to do anything to bring the level of this virus down. I mean, it's out of control. 
Uh, we talk a lot about restaurants and stores, but Governor Inslee made the point that what we do or don't do in our homes may be most important. And this may be the toughest for the average person to manage. Starting Monday, indoor social gatherings can't include anyone outside your household unless you quarantine for 14 days or seven days accompanied by a negative COVID test. Tim Gordon, KGW News. So that's the story in Washington. In Oregon, new restrictions take effect statewide on Wednesday. And for most counties, the restrictions are in place for two weeks, but in some areas, they will last longer. Bryant Clerkley joins us live now with more on Oregon's situation. Bryant. Good morning, Drew. And the purpose of these restrictions is to limit group activities to stop the spread of COVID-19. And here in Multnomah County, we're likely to be under these restrictions for four weeks. Now let's walk you through all these new restrictions. No more than six people during social gatherings, maximum 25 people indoors at faith-based services or 50 outside and take out only for restaurant and bars and rec recreational facilities like gyms will close and grocery stores, retail stores and malls will be limited to 75% capacity. Venues that host indoor and outdoor events will also be closed along with zoos. Emergency room doctor Esther Chu is pleading with people to stay home. She also spoke about patients dying alone. It has been really hard for me to see people in the hospital isolated and alone like that. I'm sorry. Many of you cheered and rang bells and put up signs calling us heroes. And we're so grateful for that. Right now, we're asking you to be our heroes. Now, the new restrictions do not include barber shops, hair salons, or massage therapy places, homeless shelters, outdoor recreation and sports, and youth sports. And for a full list of all the new restrictions, you can go to our website, kgw.com. Back to you guys. All right, Bryant, quickly live for us. Thank you. Well, yeah, what a difference a week makes. Last week, we told you about the Roxy Diner reopening in downtown Portland. It had been closed like so many others since the start of the pandemic. They renovated inside and invested in outdoor seating setups to help them get through the winter months. And now, just as their staff came back and got into the swing of things, they have to close again and they won't be doing takeout. We're just reclosing because we were worried about people's lives. Lives are more important than anything. Uh, yes, we wanted to open and we wanted to continue, but the governor had other ideas. And so we're going to go along with that and we'll be back. The Roxy will be staying open up until the new restrictions go into effect on Wednesday. So as you heard, that diner does have plans to reopen after but others may not be so lucky. The Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association says these latest restrictions will cause many restaurants to throw in the towel and close permanently. So with those closures mean layoffs and the Oregon Employment Department says it's preparing for an increase in unemployment claims. And this time OED says it's in a much better place to process those claims than it was at the start of the pandemic. The department says it'll be hiring members of the National Guard to help increase its claims processing capacity. That means out of work Oregonians will hopefully get their benefits a lot quicker. We have some breaking COVID vaccine news this morning. So in just the last hour, the drug company Moderna announced its COVID vaccine is 94% effective against the virus. These are early results from Moderna's phase three clinical trials, which involved more than 30,000 people across the country. It was just a week ago that Pfizer reported its vaccine was 90% effective. Now, both of these still need to get FDA approval, but Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's top infectious disease doctor, said this morning that vaccinations could begin in the second half of December and are expected to start with high risk groups. Turning now to Portland's homeless crisis, after decades of back and forth plans, the unused Wapato Jail in North Portland is now up and running as a homeless shelter. So it's now called the Bybee Lakes Hope Center and 25 people are currently staying there. That number is low right now because the building is still undergoing renovations and also because of COVID restrictions. But eventually the goal is to have close to 500 beds available there. 
The building also has on-site treatment programs and job training. This weekend, we had a chance to speak with one of the people living there. This works for me because, well, A, you have the staff, you have a great support team, and they hold you accountable for your actions as well. And so it's one of those things that helps get you back onto your feet on the right track, and it's positive influences. And it's not just, you're not just a number in a shelter, that you're actually a person. That, that makes a huge difference. The center does have a few restrictions. Besides space limitations, it also has strict COVID screening protocols in place so it can't accept walk-ins. People who stay there also have to agree to be clean and sober. With all the new snow on the mountain, many ski resorts are looking to open soon. Now, ski resorts are not included in COVID restrictions. So Timberline says they're hoping to open next Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. This all hinges on snow. Mount Hood Meadows hopes to have enough snow to open Friday, November 27th, the day after Thanksgiving. And Ski Bowl is shooting to open at the start of December. Whenever the season does get started, be sure to check with resorts on their COVID restrictions. I just checked this morning. They're right there on the home pages. In most cases, you'll have to reserve a time online before you head up to the mountain. Speaking of right now, let's talk about Timberline Ski Lodge. This is uh, the live shot there of the lodge currently snowing and Rod, I just drove over the pass yesterday and it was just pouring rain. Yeah and wet roads. It was no big yeah, deal. It's actually a wet mix at Timberline right now. Snow level is going up to 8,000 feet. So if you're traveling, it's going to be rainy travel at times today, tonight and tomorrow. I know that's not great news, but then we will get, we will get colder again the back half of the week. Uh, government camps at 34 degrees right now and expected to get all the way up into the mid even upper 40s today. Timberline will be up to, I think, at least 40 degrees today. Um, watching wind advisories and warnings that are already posted for tomorrow. So tomorrow we get another wet and windy cold front coming in. Wind warnings been posted for the daytime hours tomorrow for the coast. That's all the coast from Astoria down through Lincoln City down into Coos Bay. And there's also wind advisories out for the um, Columbia Basin, the East Gorge parts of it. That again is tomorrow. OK, here's what's going on today. We have a push of warm air coming up ahead of tomorrow's front. This is mostly light rain and this will be mainly an early to mid morning thing. And then this afternoon, I'm not sure if we get a cloud break or if we stay cloudy with some patchy drizzle could go either way. We're at 48 right now, so plenty mild out there. Look at these temperatures. Hello, Salem, 63 big ones for a high today with a south breeze. And I mean, it's not nothing to to, uh, you know, to, I can't even think of the word I'm going to use. It's warm in Longview. Let's go with that. 58 degrees, your high temperature today. Tomorrow, the wet, windy weather will start off around 50. We'll be in the upper 50s all day long. Occasional rain on Wednesdays. We start to cool down. Still looks like we could actually have some dry weather with freezing temperatures again in the mornings this coming Friday and Saturday, guys. <laughs> Rod, if you'd like, we'll give you about 15 more seconds to come up with that word. <laughs> I had, I, I, there was a point where I realized I'm not going to come up with a word. I'm going to move on. I don't know what to say. I like the 63 big words. <laughs> Ones too. It, was a, it was a good first weather. All right, Rod, thank you. The KGW Great Toy Drive is underway now, and every year the drive provides thousands of gifts to nonprofits that serve local families to make sure kids across our area have a great holiday. So up next, we'll get a look at one of the groups your generosity is helping. Plus, we're also talking this morning about a new view in Sandy. We're going to tell you about the device that's helping people who are color, uh, colorblind, that is. That's my fault for uh, mess messing with the rod, right? Karma. Anyways, this brand new device is helping people who are colorblind enjoy Sandy's scenery.